to evaluate the patient with minimum investigations like HbA1c, like thyroid evaluation, like renal evaluation, say for example, serum, creatinine, sodium, potassium and spot urine ACR. After evaluating the patient, the patient is put on proper antihyperglycemic agent. And this proper antihyperglycemic agent selection, it depends on the presenting HbA1c and the accompanying comorbid illness like whether the patient is having cardiovascular disease or the patient is having renal involvement or the patient is having peripheral arterial disease or say retinopathy. Say for example, a type 2 diabetes patient approaching the doctor's clinic for the first time drug naive where HbA1c is up to 7.5, the dictum is to put the patient on monotherapy and that monotherapy may be either metformin which is the gold standard in the management of type 2 diabetes mellitus or it may be gliptin or it may be gliflozin or it may be even oral GLP-1 RA. Since 2008, after the launch of novel anti-hyperglycemic therapy, if you quote my own personal data, I never use glimepiride glyclozide in my prescription. 7.5 to 10.5 HB1C drug night patients. From day one, the patients are put on dual therapy. That dual therapy may be metformin gliptin, metformin gliflozin, or gliptin gliflozin, or metformin GLP on RA, or even GLP on RA and gliflozin. And the patients where HB1C is between 10.5 to 12.5 or even 13 percent without features of I mean osmotic syndrome like polydipsia, polyphagia, polyuria and weight loss, the patients are put on triple therapy from day one. That triple therapy may be metformin, gliptin and gliflozin. That triple therapy may be metformin, GLP-1 and gliflozin. Now coming to the group where drug dye patients with the presenting H1C 13% and above, say for example if you quote my own real world data in my OPD, 18 to 19% H1C is not uncommon. Every day I encounter at least 3 to 4 patients, new patients of H1C between 18 and 19% where I straight away put the patient on insulin. And regarding insulin, usually my philosophy is to create a near normal physiological mimicry and for which human mixed art insulin, um, rather pre-mixed insulin or even say insulin co-formulation, say for example IDEG aspart, I mean these are the insulin which are never capable of creating physiological mimicry. So I usually put the patient on basal insulin, either basal basal plus, basal 2 plus or basal bolus depending on the scenario.